Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to talk about the steps of phagocytosis. Phagocytosis is a really important process in the immune system carried out by phagocytic cells or phagocytes. Sometimes you hear them referred to as phagocytes. But anyway, these are cells in the immune system that actually um, phagocytose, which means bring in and destroy invading bacteria as well as just dead or dying cells within the organism that need kind of taken care of. Some examples of cells that do this are macrophages, dendritic cells, and neutrophils. So these are all different kinds of phagocytes in the immune system. Phagocytosis has five basic steps. First, the phagocyte has to be activated. It has to be alerted that there is um, either an invading pathogen or some dead cells that it needs to clean up. Then it performs chemotaxis. Chemotaxis is just a fancy word meaning that it receives a chemical signal that tells it to move in this direction. So basically it follows a gradient of chemicals. Um, it moves sort of up the gradient towards the area where that chemical is present in greater concentration. And that's how it finds either the site of the infection or the site of the cells that need cleaned up. Once it gets there, it attaches to the cell. Um, as long as it recognizes it as something that it is supposed to engulf and destroy, then it will ingest it and destroy it. So those are the, the five basic steps. We're going to look at steps three, four, and five in a bit more detail now. So here I have a phagocyte drawn, just kind of a generic one. All of these um, projections that come out of the cell, um, these are what are called pseudopodia um, or pseudopods, pseudopod being um, singular, so pseudopodia, which means false feet, uh, that's where the name comes from. But they're basically these like finger-like projections that they use to, um, to, uh, to, to engulf, to bring in the thing that they're going to destroy. So let's um, draw a captured bacterium here in red. So this is a bacterium that it recognizes. Basically, there are little um, receptors here that will recognize certain things on the surface of bacterial cells, telling the phagocyte that this is a bacterium, uh, we should ingest this and eat it so it doesn't cause an infection, or to help fight an infection that's already started. So this is what we call recognition of a PAMP by a PRR. PAMP, P-A-M-P, stands for Pathogen Associated Molecular Pattern. So it's just something that is um, present in a pathogen that's not present in a host cell. So something like tachoic acids um, or LPS, just something that's present in, in bacteria. So recognition of the PAMP, of the pattern on the bacterial cell, by a PRR. PRR stands for Pattern Recognition Receptor. It's just a receptor that recognizes the PAMP. So for example, um, TLR4 is the Pattern Recognition Receptor that recognizes LPS, which is one of those pattern, one of those pathogen-associated molecular patterns. So there's some kind of recognition and that causes the, a couple of pseudopods to come and engulf the bacterium. It's then brought into the cell um, in a membrane-bound vesicle known as a phagosome. The phagosome will then merge with an organelle called a lysosome. And the lysosome is full of digestive enzymes. And so when the lysosome and the phagosome merge, they create something that's then known as a phagolysosome. And then we have the bacterium in there that is being exposed to all of these digestive enzymes, which will break it down. So then you get um, the, the bacterium being broken down. So that's what's happening here. And then eventually 
you get something called a residual body where really the only thing that's left of that original bacterium is just um, non-digestible, indigestible waste that there's nothing more to break down. And then that waste is um, removed from the cell by the process of exocytosis. So if we summarize here real quick, we've got pseudopods that engulf the bacterium once that PAMP is recognized by a PRR, brought in as a phagosome, merges with a lysosome, the digestive enzymes do their bit, then we eventually have exocytosis where um, the remains of that bacterium are um, pushed out of the cell. So that right there is the process of phagocytosis. Um, if you're interested in watching some of my other videos that have to do with the immune system, then check out my playlist on immunology. And thanks for watching Biology Professor.